In this project, the architects have explored and refined the use of materiality and space. We're really seeing this bold move of separating the property from the landscape, both inside and out. I love seeing the home of an architect, and if the outside is anything to go by, I can't wait to see the inside. Howard, what an incredibly welcoming room. Yes. Well, this was the um, original cottage that we fell in love with. Um, it was designed by uh, Robert McIntyre, son of Peter oh, yeah. McIntyre, a famous Melbourne architect, and he designed it originally for an American who lived in Hong Kong and came here on holiday. A little getaway home. Yeah, and it had lots of sort of little architectural quirks to it, but also a lot of character and, and sort of sense of place and history. Which like this to fireplace. Get. The fireplace is original. My wife said to me, we must keep all of that because you couldn't do something um, as good as that. <laughs> I'm glad you put a foot down. <laughs> I can't imagine this room without it. But the whole place really kind of becomes a TARDIS or a foil for the rest of the house. Howard, you weren't kidding. This really is so different. And look at this dining table. Yeah, the dining table was um, inspired by the way you go to a cafe and sort of try and grab a set of tables and chairs and put them together. To gather all your friends? Gather your friends together. I'm noticing a lot of texture and details. Tell me about this. We wanted to give the look of a great big chopping block. The tiles were actually tricky though because we found that in order to keep them sort of rigid, the joiner had to screw every one of these down from underneath. Oh, I bet he loved you. <laughs> the result is wonderful. And I, I think the end grain or grain always gives that sense of a sort of history and story. And we can't ignore this amazing statement in the room. Well, yellow is always hard to ignore. <laughs> this is a sort of laser cut panel um, cut into the OSB. Uh, and it, it makes a labyrinth, so you can chase your way all the way around it, which the kids love to do, yes. and then you arrive at the sort of central point, this idea of a sort of pilgrimage. What a lovely thought. And it's a door. It's a door. To yet another amazing space. Yeah, well, this is five metres high, and we're sort of in behind that big octagon window that you see from outside. And from in here, of course, it's about this sort of panoramic projection out into the landscape. You really feel like you're in a command centre overlooking the fields. I guess that idea of sort of watching out um, was a bit of an architectural theme because the big octagonal window um, refers to some early warning radar buildings for monitoring ballistic missiles. So the window here is almost like a viewpoint it's looking out is, over your yeah. world it's, and the changes it's that It's almost happen. a constant reminder that in looking at this wonderful landscape, you also need to be concerned. It really looks quite different when it's raw like this or compared to when it's painted. Yeah, we, we used five colours in the end. We used a, a black, um, a white, the grey here, the yellow of course, and this natural colour. Um, but we, we should have a look downstairs. We've sort of tried to explore some of these effects more. I feel a little bit like we're in that maze, like in your door upstairs. Yes, well, it, and it's a bit like being in the hull of a ship. And then you open up to this incredible view. Yes, well, here we're at, you know, lower down in that big octagonal window. So you really feel that you're getting that intimacy of the view. And I can see what you're doing here, Howard. This octagonal shape appears again. Yes, this is that sort of radar element kind of pointing you out um, to the landscape. But at the same time, it's just folding the space around you and creating a really, a, you know, a, an intimate spot. With each room having a completely different look and feel, there was a real risk of this home feeling disjointed. But Howard's overarching vision and a consistent use of paint colour and textures has created a delightfully cohesive flow. This was the centre of the wool and yarn industry in Melbourne. It started in about the 1860s right through to the early 1900s. This whole area was filled with old buildings that related to the wool industry. They were converted to apartments in the early 1990s. Oh, okay. 
I'm starting to see why they're calling it the White House now. And the void, we're talking, what is it, eight, nine metres it's in enormous, height? enormous, isn't it? So being a storehouse, they would have used it to transport goods up and down between the levels. Don't tell me they broke this during installation. No, no, this is a detail that we like to use a lot when working with natural stone. It's very soft and tactile, but it uh, shows you that it is a natural material. Now that's the complete opposite of white, isn't it? It is, and it's breaking the rule, I suppose. We sort of felt that we needed a central feature and the staircase ties the levels together and we liked that the house circulates around this major sculptural piece. Well, I suppose being in Collingwood, black and white, we've done the right choices, haven't we? <laughs> and I'm starting to see, Chris, um, a space which is reminiscent to an art gallery. I'm glad you picked up on that, because as you can see, the owners have a large variety of eclectic furnishings and furniture, and we really wanted their personality to be what you read when you come into the house. So for us, the house had to sit as a backdrop, as a gallery does, and allowed really the objects and the personality of the owners to come through. Some pieces of furniture here are reminiscent of my childhood. I remember my parents having <laughs> furniture like that. It's a very comforting feeling staring back at, uh, at this type of furniture. Now we come back to this beautiful piece of artwork, which is the staircase. I was going to ask, did you have to crane this in? Well, interestingly, it's aluminium and it's brought in as, as individual treads. So they stack together like a Lego set. You can see them there, each one's brought in, stacked on top of each other and tied together with a big thread rod at the top. Do you think it's strong enough for the both of us? Let's give it a shot. Well, let's have a go, I'm hoping so. <laughs> it's got a little bit of an industrial edge, which I like. It kind of it has a lot of references back to the original building, the steel and the concrete and that rawness. So I think it works really well as a, you know, a bold object. I've noticed that you've um, gone away from the single tone white and uh, you've added a wonderful, what is it, a, a darkish grey sort of tone? It is, yeah, there's a little bit of blue in it, a bluey grey that we wanted some of the spaces to have a sense of intimacy, I suppose. So it's, it's one corner of the building where we injected that little bit of colour and it provides a darkness to offset some of the mid-century furniture, the warmth, ready brownie tones. Upstairs here now, we've come into the bedroom zone, is that correct? Yeah, so this is where we introduce carpet for softness. You can feel it underfoot, you can, it makes a difference acoustically, doesn't it? It just really softens the space and softens that warehouse feel for the bedroom. And I see the windows the same as downstairs. This is allowing all the natural light to come through the space, isn't it? Yeah, look, it does. We're reliant on that single source of this one facade that has windows. So you can really get that sense of how effective it was not building walls through here. And the light really permeates the floor plate. So where's the bathroom? Well, the bathroom's actually tucked away behind the one wall we actually built. So you'll see here, it's sort of a wall, but it's only half height. It's very warehousey, isn't it? It is, look, it's quite rough timber. You can see it's a low grade pine. We've painted it white to carry in and match all the other white and texture layers throughout the building. But you'll notice there's a lot of the saw marks in the timber from its milling process. And they pick up on a lot of the formwork textures in the concrete and the renders. So there's a real relationship between the uh, the existing shell and then these introduced materials. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, this is very different to downstairs. It seems to have a, a, you know, a sense of opulence in here, doesn't it? It does, it's a different feel. It's, we wanted the bathroom, because it's an inserted room within the shell, we wanted it to have its own feel. It's still highlighting the textures and the white existing ceiling and walls, but it's got a little bit of a sense of tucked away intimacy as, you know, as an ensuite should. The owners of this White House are so happy with the result of what I can say is a genuine warehouse conversion. Although cavernous, it still maintains a strong sense of coziness. This is one conversion that truly speaks to its past.